Hello friends, my name is Olympus, I'm the worst Call of Duty player in the world, and I'm not ashamed of that. Thankfully though, sometimes even the worst of players can have good games, and this game that you're about to see happened to be one of the best games I've ever had. It's only the second game I've gotten an actual emergency airdrop in a game, and um, I was really proud of the way I got there. I was also playing on a very good team of random players, which is always helpful. But the purpose of this video isn't to talk about the gameplay, it's to talk about something that is a very sensitive issue for me, and it is the social issues that abound in gaming, and some of my social issues in general. I'm really putting myself out there for this one, uh, and I'm going to do the best I can to refrain from any self-pity. I want to be clear that I'm not trying to whine or cry or look for sympathy here. I'm just sharing some thoughts. Gaming has always been a social activity, going all the way back to Pong. Two people would sit next to each other with their control wheels and see who could put, you know, enough English on the ball to get it past their opponent. The consoles of the 90s always came with at least two controller ports, and the social aspect of gaming hit its peak, I think, with the Nintendo 64, which had four controller ports, and people would play GoldenEye or Mario Party all night long and just make a big occasion out of it. And that's awesome. Growing up, I had my share of friends, and I went to a few of those parties, but most of my friends and the people I hung out with weren't really into gaming. I got my original PlayStation when I was in 7th grade, and the PlayStation 2 was really the first major purchase I ever made saving up my own money for. I loved gaming, but I didn't really have anyone to share it with when I was younger. And I took a break from gaming during college. My original launch model PS2 lasted an extremely long time, but finally gave up its working condition while I was in college. I went several years without gaming until I moved to Atlanta for graduate school. I was in a completely new area of the country. I had no friends down there. You know, I'm not going for self-pity here. It was just reality. I've never been a very social person, and being in an area of the country where the culture was so drastically different than where I grew up in the Midwest made it that much harder to connect with people and establish relationships. You know, I, I, I was congenial with my grad school colleagues, and I thought I was establishing some genuine friendships with some of them, but the second school ended contact was virtually cut off and with me and their friendships went on. I still see signs that many of those friendships have lasted for these 10 years now, but I'm not a part of that. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to ride the pity train. I'm just stating facts as I see them. During my grad school experience, I acquired a PlayStation 3, and that generation of consoles was the first true explosion of the online experience of social gaming. You no longer needed to be in the same room with anyone to enjoy time gaming with them. Through online gaming and voice communication, you could keep the good times of the old gaming memories with your friends, as well as establish new ones and make new friends and become a part of new communities. There was one time in my life where it felt like I was having major success using gaming to establish friendships. During the lifetime of Modern Warfare 2, I became involved with a clan of people who would play that game together with a similar mindset. We, we had great players, we had average players, and then we had bad players like me. But, you know, we played the game for fun, using a common methodology, and, and we had a great time. That clan started to fall apart during Modern Warfare 3, and I needed a serious, serious break from first-person shooters and from online gaming in general. That was about five years ago, and I hadn't played any Call of Duty game, or really any first-person shooter game since then. But since Call of Duty World War II has been out, I've been bit by the FPS bug, and I'm really enjoying these games, despite not being very good at them. And from a social aspect, things have changed a lot 
since Modern Warfare 2, and I'm going to give two examples. First, Call of Duty used to be the online game for people to play, at least on consoles. PC gaming, whole different animal. But on consoles, COD was where it was at, and you could argue that it was that way until this year, when a little game called Fortnite landed and completely blew up online multiplayer gaming, becoming by far the most popular game in the world, and a game that I believe will completely change the gaming industry as we know it. And I gave Fortnite a fair try. If you follow my channel, you may remember a while back I made a video called Why I Am Quitting Fortnite. I linked that video down below in the description, but long story short, I quit for two reasons. Number one, I was terrible at the game. And unlike Call of Duty, it is very, very difficult to enjoy Fortnite if you're not very good at it. It's just not very fun to spawn in, parachute down, wander around and then die the first time you see somebody and number two it was no fun because i had no one to experience it with i had no one to laugh at silly moments explore the game in humorous ways and just mess around and have a good time i've only played one single game of fortnite with people i know and it was by far the most fun i've had with the game I wasn't going to spend time trying to play a game I wasn't good at, especially since I had no one to play it with, so I decided my gaming time would be better spent elsewhere. And it, it just wasn't worth my time or effort to try and get better at Fortnite. But that brings me to the second major thing that has changed in online gaming, and that is the blossoming of competition and esports. People don't game for fun the way they used to. Gaming used to be about hanging out with friends and having a good time. It was less about the game and more about having fun. But now esports and competition is all the rage. And the most popular online games all have serious competitive communities. This competitive vibe has trickled down to the casual public modes as well. I've tried multiple times to hop into a Fortnite community but most people have flat out said that they don't want to play with me because I'm not on their level. And, you know, that's fine. It's their prerogative. But it's to the point now where I'm so desperate to be in a community that I've started actually playing Fortnite again in the vain effort to try and get better so that I'll get invited to a game. And those are some of the clips you're seeing right now of me trying to play Fortnite. But uh, I've, go I've gone way down the self-pity road now, though, so... I'm going to wrap this up. What I know is I haven't kept up with the times. The focus in online gaming now is winning, and the majority of the community is only having fun when they're winning. Since I'm always going to be somebody who plays for fun first and, you know, winning second, it's always going to leave me on the outside. And to be fair, I can carry my own and contribute to a team, especially in a game like Call of Duty that I've played a lot of hours of. But despite that, finding a community to play with has not never come easy for me, and it's just really, really frustrating. I'd love to end this video on a more optimistic note, but the whole reason this video exists is because my optimism is fading. It's running thin. You know, I know more self-pity, right? But ultimately, all I can do is keep trying. I'm going to keep making videos, running streams, playing games, because it's a hobby and I enjoy it. Uh, if anyone else wants to come along for the ride with me, I'd love to have you. I don't judge anyone, and I hope no one would judge me for not being an elite player. Thank you so much for sticking with me uh, throughout this. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section about what I've said. Again, I'm not looking for pity or empathy, and I wouldn't expect any. any. I'm just looking for conversation, whether it's good or bad. <laughs> And my, my normal sign-off may sound contradictory at this point, but I'll say it anyway. It's okay to be bad as long as you're having fun. I'll catch you in the next video.